Good morning, invited guests, parents, staff, and students, and welcome to our senior school closing ceremony. I would like to acknowledge and respect the Lekwungen speaking peoples on whose traditional territory we stand, and the Songhees, Esquimalt, and Wasainich peoples whose historical relationships with the land continue to this day. Please rise for the singing of O Canada, accompanied by Alexis Kuo on piano. Thank you, choir. I would now like to call our head of school, Mr. Chad Holtum, to the stage for a few welcome remarks. Mr. Holtum. Oh, thank you, Mr. Palm. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. And what an important day it is. And I know that everyone has, everyone watching has a mix of emotions. But I also know that one of them, perhaps the strongest one of them, is desire to bring on the summer. So I will do my best to be, keep my remarks brief. If you only take one thing away from the next few minutes, I hope that it's gratitude. The gratitude that I have for every single one of you. And the gratitude that I know you have for the people with whom you have shared this truly remarkable, one-of-a-kind experience. They say that every school year is unique, but I think that when it comes to this year, unique is an understatement. I would argue that for many years from now, when people look back on the history of this amazing school, they'll point at 2020, 2021, and say that was a year unlike any other in the history of Glenline Norfolk School, and they'll be right but not for the reasons you're thinking, or maybe not entirely for the reasons you're thinking. This was a year of flux. It was a year of uncertainty, unpredictability, instability. It was a year in which everything that we know about education, whether you were the one delivering it or the one receiving it, was put to the test. If you think about it, every element of GNS is built around interactions around connections. And this is a community that supports its own, that encourages one another to push beyond their comfort zones and to achieve successes that are often hard to even imagine, let alone dream about. And then, almost overnight, that community was tested. I remember in the early days of COVID, I wasn't concerned about our ability to educate students virtually but rather about our ability to recreate the GNS experience. I've said before that the International Baccalaureate Education is the heartbeat of the educational experience at GNS, but the people are the soul. 
So about 12 months ago, when we started planning for a return to campus that was anything but certain, one thing that we knew for sure was that no matter what, things would be different. And when September began, while I was confident that we'd be able to offer our students the same level of instruction as ever before, I had more than a few sleepless nights concerned that the experience would be different. And here's the thing, it was. This year has been different. It has been the most unexpected, unpredictable, unimaginable, unbelievable year I could possibly imagined. And it was all of those things because of you. To our parents, there's no way to put into the words what your support, your encouragement, and your willingness to work with us and your children has meant this year. As you know, this relationship works because it's symbiotic. We are in a partnership. And I never take for granted the fact that year in and year out, you are entrusting your children to our school with the most sacred of duties, to educate your children both inside and outside the classroom, to inspire them, to excite them, and to make sure that they're able to create and pursue happiness and success on their own terms. I also want to take a moment to say thank you for your courage to voice your opinions, both positive and constructive, when you've seen opportunities for growth. Thank you to our parents. To our faculty and staff, my colleagues, peers, and friends, I'm truly in awe of your collective talent, empathy, patience, and poise. We ask a lot from our educators every year, but this year, those expectations seem to multiply many times over. Teaching is about connection, and so many of the intentionally created opportunities to connect the teacher and the student were threatened this year. And yet, through it all, you persevered. You adapted. You approached challenges as opportunities, and you seized the chance to innovate and imagine. I don't know how you do it, but every time I think I've seen your very best, you somehow collectively one-up yourselves. Thank you. And to our students, I promise I'm almost done. None of this happens without you. None of it. It may not seem like it to you, but I can assure you that every year at GNS, the climate is different. The faces may look the same, but you as a whole have changed. You have grown. And whether you realize it, you, you, are, you are the ones who decide on how successful a school year is going to be. I'm so grateful that this year, you've chosen the path that you did. I've lost track of the moments of pride that I have felt because of you. Everything this year was different. And you approached this each and every day with the same enthusiasm, the same willingness to learn, and the same desire to support and challenge each other. You have shown that you have the ability, and more importantly, the desire to weather the storms of change and emerge on the other side all the better for it. And of course, none of this happens without the grade 12s. And I'll be saving most of my remarks for the grade 12 ceremony next week, but I would like to publicly recognize this group for their poise and resilience over these last two years. Their ability to remain focused, to remain positive, and to remain connected set the tone for every one of the students in the senior school, and indeed every student across both of our campuses. And before I close, I wanted to offer a special thank you to Mr. Doug Palm for his leadership in the senior school. This has not been an easy year, but you have persevered and we owe you a great deal of gratitude. Thank you, Doug. I hope that all of you enjoy a restful and fun summer, and I look forward to another spectacular year when we are all back together in September to do our best through truth and courage and continue to be a school that we can all be proud of. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holton. 
did want to begin with a few remarks and a, and a few thank yous as well, uh, and some farewells. And then we will get into our uh, awards element of, of our ceremony. So as Mr. Holtham said, it has been an amazing year in the senior school, but one that has been amazingly challenging and amazingly needing adaptability and amazing patience. And at the same time, through truth and courage, it has been amazingly successful. Throughout assemblies and other events, we have acknowledged the progress and achievements of many. We are proud of the accomplishments of all of our students, most especially in the way they care and support each other in their quest to do their very best, no matter if they needed to walk a long way to get to each class. Now, under normal circumstances, we say that the school has to run well with a coordinated and concerted effort of everyone in the community. And this year, not only did that happen, but we've had a wonderful example of how a group of people can overcome any challenge. I wanted to take a moment to thank the, these groups, and I know Mr. Holtham touched on it, but I feel really um, that it's important for me to be able to say this from the senior school's perspective and on behalf of all of the senior school. To our senior school families, we thank you for supporting your children in so many ways to be able to commit to and be successful in a myriad of activities and opportunities. I know this year was particularly hard with our protocols, not allowing you on campus most of the time. That being said, you are wonder wonderful supportive partners, always willing to help us find the best way to support your children's learning. I wanted to particularly thank our volunteers who provide so much to our community at lunch times, in the cafeteria, helping support our athletics, debates and other events that were online this year, our grade reps in each grade, and the list goes on. The leadership by our parents' auxiliary co-chairs, Claudia Bloom and Lisa Sacklis, set a wonderful example for all of us with their involvement, organization, and Griffin spirit for every facet of the school. And on behalf of all of us, thank you. To the senior school students, you are the reason we are here, but especially this year, I think you, you brought a presence and an energy that has fueled all of us through till today. You inspire us all to do our very best as you burst in the scene with your energy and your enthusiasm and your commitment and incredible positivity. Your resilience and dedication throughout the year has been brilliant, and I'll be digging more into this idea at the end of the program. But we thank you for contributing on so many levels to a very successful year. Thank you, students. <laughs> to our support staff, thank you for your dedication and commitment and professionalism and never-ending energy as you provide that essential framework and support for the school to run so smoothly. I believe this group represents the unsung heroes of our pandemic at GNS, having to ensure the elements of safety each day in each area of our school to continually find creative ways as we respond to the new protocols. And on behalf of everyone here, we very much thank you. <laughs> to the senior school teaching staff, each year your energy, wisdom, commitment, and dedication shines through daily. The level of excellence of which you demand of yourselves in order to support, encourage, and develop each student's learning and character is inspiring. This occurs not only in the classroom, but as your roles as coaches and sponsors and coordinators of so many activities that were designed to provide our students with all these opportunities. This past year with protocols and processes fo focused on ensuring safety has challenged your creativity, your positivity, and your collaboration. And in some cases, it actually ran absolutely opposite of best practice. And yet, you were still able to create those strong and lasting relationships with students. You modeled perseverance and, you and that continued example of lifelong learning. It is a privilege to work with you all. And on behalf of all the senior school students and families, we cannot thank you enough. Thank you, teachers. <laughs> Particularly to those staff members who will be departing GNS, or taking a one-year leave of absence, we would like to say farewell. 
Madame Andrea Harris will be taking a year's leave beginning in June. She's looking forward to a year full of reflection and opportunities that come with not being at school each day. We will certainly miss her presence as a wonderful collaborative colleague, gifted educator and leader, supportive home form advisor, and involved in a myriad of activities, including SAC. Madame Harris, we wish you well in your year away and the opportunities it affords. And as she says, we may see her just a few days as a TOC too. We are sad to share the news that Mrs. Jennifer Brown will be leaving us at the end of the school year. Mrs. Brown has been such a great addition to our senior school office team. Her friendly, welcoming, and supportive nature is so appreciated, and we are grateful to her for everything she brings to work each day. She wishes to express how much her time here has been a joy, and that she will be forever grateful for this experience. Jen feels she's lucky to have come back to a place that she's enjoyed so much as a student. We wish her nothing but the best, and we'll look for her at alumni events in the future. We say farewell to Mr. Jason Lee, who has been at GNS for the past two years. Initially as a member of our learning strategies team and part of the middle school, he has then moved over this year to our math department and joined the senior school. Throughout his time here, the constant, pun intended, is his wonderful connections to students and colleagues, his caring demeanor, and his involvement in co-curriculars as coach or sponsor. He will be moving to Vancouver to be closer to family and will be teaching math at Fraser Academy next year. Mr. Lee has that unique ability as a teacher to support his students, but still demand the best in them, and we wish him all the very best in his future. <laughs> After taking a year's leave of absence, Ms. Annie Valance has decided she will not be returning to GNS. As a student and teacher at GNS, she attended every school day for a total of 22 years. With her mom and aunts all attending Norfolk House and her daughters attending school while both herself and her mom worked at the school has made her uniquely connected to GNS. We will miss her positive energy, wise perspective, collaborative spirit, and leadership. She's excited to continue to find new and different challenges and opportunities in education beyond GNS, GNS's walls. We wish her all the very best in her future and know she will be, continue to be connected to GNS in so many ways. <laughs> After an astounding 55 year connection to GNS, Mrs. Jean Bigelow will be retiring this year. While her current role is leading the beach as the junior school principal, she has held a number of other roles across the school. These include middle school principal, director of student life and senior school, learning strategies teacher, learning strategies head of department, outweek trip coordinator, and teacher of English, art, social studies, career and personal planning, and even the choir organizer. Quite the list, isn't it? As one particular staff member remarked, she has also had the best office an educator can have here in Canada with the beautiful sunroom at Rattenbury House, but also maybe the least appealing one while working at PW. Hint, it's not an office any longer. <laughs> On a personal note, I have appreciated working closely with her in her collaborative spirit gaining her wisdom and always honest perspective along with her absolutely unrivaled can-do attitude. They say the measure of a person is the positive influence you can have on others. Just think of the number of people Jean has touched through her 55 years at GNS and you have a glimpse into the amazing career she has enjoyed and the legacy she has left. On behalf of everyone connected with the senior school, we wish you the very best in your retirement and congratulate you on an astounding GNS career, Jean. <laughs> now, before we begin the awards portion, we would like to explain a few logistics for people that are here in the hall today. If you do receive an award, 
please come up to the stage from the far side from where I'm standing. Madame Gerard is going to show us how. And as you come up, you're going to stand on the X. Please receive your award and pause while your photograph is taken by our photographer, which is right in front of you, so you just have to look straight forward. All photos will be made available on the school website in the summer. Now, some of the awards will be presented by your teachers, who will be on the opposite side of that table. And if this is the case, please leave your mask on until they step aside. Then you can pose for a photo without your mask. If there is no one that will be in the photo with you and just yourself, then please remove your mask once you reach the stage. Now please leave the big trophy or any other element that's on there on the stage and take your book prize with you. <laughs> After the photo, please take time to put your mask back on before returning to your seat. Take your time, we promise we will wait. At this ceremony, we are acknowledging some of the amazing work that GNS students have accomplished. As I mentioned before, this is merely a glimpse into the learning experience of this school year and gives us an opportunity to specifically mention some noteworthy accomplishments. Before getting into the awards, we're going to take a moment to remember some of the events of this year with a slideshow. We are going to begin our presentation of awards by inviting Mr. Steve Thompson, head of the Arts Department, to the stage um, to acknowledge the outstanding work in band, choir, theatre and visual arts. He is also joined by members of the Arts Department. Mr. Thompson. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Palm. 
We will begin with our theater awards, and I would like to invite Ms. Adrienne Smook to the stage. The Muriel C. Fraser Award for Theater is awarded to a grade 11 student who has demonstrated significant proficiency in drama. And this year's Muriel C. Fraser Drama Award goes to Mackenzie Heaney. I've never been asked to be louder before, but so here goes. Um, the Henderson Cup for Drama is our top award for a drama student in grades nine through 11 who chooses and is capable of going on in the theater. And this year's recipient of the Henderson Cup for Drama is Madeline Kelly. For each area of band, theater, choir, and visual arts, we will be presenting the Allen and Lorene van der Kerkhoff Family Scholarships. These are intended to go beyond grade point average, to focus on and celebrate effort with the ability to shine in the arts through determination and effort while exemplifying GNS's family values. This year's recipient of the van der Kerkhoff Scholarship in Drama is Calla Roberts. And thank you to Ms. Smook. We will now move on to a, sorry, to our Choral Awards and joined by Ms. Amanda Cheval. The Madeline Humor Singing Award is given to a grade nine, 10, or 11 student who best embodies Mrs. Humor's dedication, musicianship, and above all, a joy and passion for singing. For their efforts in choir, this award goes to Rebecca Palm. This year's recipient of the Van der Kerkhoff Scholarship in Choir is Connor Roberts. Thank you, Ms. Cheval. We will now recognize award recipients in visual arts, joined by Ms. Gina Seacott. The award for excellence in visual arts is presented to a grade nine, 10, or 11 student who shows excellence, commitment, creativity, and a willingness to take risks in visual arts. This year's winner is Savannah Yaramchuk.
We will now present the Drew Paoni Memorial Award. Drew was full of energy as an artist and an athlete. He marched to his own tune and was very modest about his accomplishments. Many teachers had no idea of his incredible quirky sense of humor or his creativity and skill with his anime voiceovers. The award is presented to the most innovative student in graphic art who passionately creates art in the graphic art style. This year's recipient of the Drew Paoni Memorial Award is Alice Lee. And the Van der Kirchhoff Family Scholarship in Visual Arts is awarded to the student who shows an ability to shine in art through determination and effort. This year's recipient is Allison Roberts. And thank you to Ms. Seacott. I will now present the awards for band. The Junior Band Award recognizes a student in grade nine or 10 who has demonstrated outstanding commitment and excellence in performance. We would like to congratulate this year's winner of the Junior Band Award, Jason Yee. As with the other areas of the arts, the Van der Kirchhoff Family Scholarship is awarded to a student who demonstrates a strong sense of family values with an ability to shine in the arts. It is my great pleasure to award this year's award for band to Brian Lim. I'm now thrilled to announce the Greenwood Family Shield for Performing Arts. It recognizes a student who has excelled in at least three areas of the performing arts. And this year's recipient of the Greenwood Family Shield for Performing Arts is Jack Berry. As we conclude the Arts Awards, I would like to invite the choir to the stage. The Senior School Choir will perform two songs. The first is O Danny Boy, which is an old Irish air. And the second is Ave Verum Corpus by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Playing solo flute is Miss Annie Jo. And accompanying the choir on piano is Tallulah Tam.
Well, the choir, Mr. Thompson, and the members of the Arts Department. It's wonderful, to, it's wonderful to have live music back. We now ask Ms. Adrienne Smook, our service coordinator, to please come forward 
to make a few remarks. Ms. Smoot. Thank you, Mr. Palm. Good morning, everyone. Every year, you, the senior school students, participate in a range of service activities and initiatives. This year, a year like no other, has placed certain challenges in your path, particularly in terms of service. You have, however, found meaningful opportunities to learn through service and creative ways of making an impact. You have engaged with service learning outcomes that include collaboration, planning, persevering, ethics, and global action. I have had the privilege of reading about the countless ways you have made an impact on individuals in your lives and in your community, from helping extended family members to connect online, to cleaning microplastics from our beaches, tutoring, coaching, the list goes on and on. You have also spent countless hours in your community working with organizations, groups, charities, and foundations. Here is a short list of all of the groups that you have engaged with through service just this year. It's pretty amazing. Um, when you are out in the community working with individuals or with organizations such as these, you're ambassadors to our school. You embody our GNS core values of truth, courage, caring, individuality, and community and you make such a meaningful impact. Thank you for an incredible year of service. Thank you, Ms. Smoot. I would, like, I would like to now invite Mr. Pat Giomi to the stage to present the math awards. Mr. Giomi. Thank you, Mr. Palm. Um, this year, we participated in the University of Waterloo's uh, mathematics contest, the Pascal, Cayley, Fermat, and Euclid. And I'm here to present the, awards, uh, the, the award for the top student at each level. Starting with uh, grade nine, this year's Pascal contest winner is Kevin Lim. Congratulations, Kevin. The Cayley contest is for grade uh, 10 students. Um, this year's winner is uh, Joseph He, and that name might not sound familiar because Joseph's in grade eight. Um, he was presented with his award at the middle school assembly last year, so we congratulate Joseph. The Fermat contest is for grade 11 students and the Euclid contest is a three hour test of one's mathematical medal um, for grade 12 students and lower. This year's winner for both the Fermat and the Euclid is Brian Lim. Congratulations, Brian. Um, I'd like to conclude by announcing some exciting results from our mathematics club. The club uh, this year was run by Mr. Jason Lee. Um, this year, the club participated in the Mathematics Challenger Contest, where they earned uh, second place regionally. So I'd uh, invite Marvin Jung and Kevin Liv Lim to come up on stage to receive the team plaque and to recognize them for their individual achievements. So Marvin and Kevin, could you come on down, please? Marvin earned eighth place regionally and Kevin earned third place regionally. So congratulations, gentlemen.
<laughs> you can grab the metal Marvin if you want. That's yours. <laughs> Congratulations, Math Club and Mr. Lee for a fabulous year, and congratulations to all our contest winners. Um, I would like to now pass it over to Mr. Palm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jomi. We are now moving into the presentation of awards for each of our grade levels. I would like to begin by calling Mr. Damon Henry, the principal of the middle school to the stage to present the next awards. Mr. Henry. Thanks, Mr. Palm. Uh, good morning. It's nice to be here. Um, so we'll begin with our grade nine awards today. Um, the D.W. Atkins Book Prize is awarded to a grade nine student who has demonstrated impressive academic effort. Let us congratulate this year's winner, Charlotte Quinn. The English Cup is awarded to a grade nine student who is an excellent citizen and who shows leadership potential. Please congratulate Sophie Davies. Next, we have the Prior Cup. And the Prior Cup is presented to a grade nine student who has served the community and the school as a whole. Our worthy recipient this year is Sean Vink. <laughs> Uh, the following two students have achieved the top academic averages in the grade nine class. First, receiving a book prize, Sophie Davies. <laughs> Congratulations, Sophie. And finally, the year's recipient of the Selwood Scholarship for the top mark in grade nine is awarded to Kevin Lim. <laughs> You're getting your steps in today, Kevin. Congratulations. Well done, Grade 9 award winners. I would now like to invite Ms. Jean Bigelow to the stage to present our Grade 10 awards. Thank you, Mr. Henry. The Charles Heisterman Cup is awarded to the Grade 10 student who has demonstrated impressive effort. The Heisterman Cup goes to a very deserving student, Owen Twomley.
The McDowell Shield is awarded to a grade 10 student who demonstrates integrity, responsible citizenship, and strength through character and conduct. This year, we congratulate the winner, Cole Marriott. The Alumni Association Scholarship is given to a returning grade 10 student who, in the judgment of the senior school faculty, best combines academic success with service and contribution to the school. The winner of the Alumni Scholarship is Tallulah Tam. The following two students have achieved the top academic averages in the grade 10 class. Receiving a book prize is Jason Yi. This year's recipient of the Westinghouse Scholarship as top student in grade 10 is Nico Kriskov. Thank you, Mrs. Bigelow. I will now present the grade 11 awards. The Bullen Prize is given to a grade 11 student who has demonstrated impressive academic effort. There is no doubt the worthy recipient is Benny Bloom. The Harvey Thoreau Scholarship was established by an anonymous donor to honor Mr. Thoreau's dedication as teacher, coach, and mentor. This scholarship is awarded to a grade 11 student returning for grade 12, who demonstrates integrity, initiative, and who through thought and action shows leadership and strength of character. The deserving winner is Carmen Spencer. The Nathan James Gimiano Scholarship is made annually in memory of Nathan Gimiano, a former student of Glenarm Norfolk School, who was a model citizen, attained high academic average, and was, and was an accomplished musician. This is given to a grade 11 student who demonstrates effective, reliable, outstanding service to the school. This year's winner is Angelina Seferic.
The following two students have achieved the top academic averages in grade 11. Receiving the book prize is Hopper Kendrigan. And this year's recipient of the Vander Scholarship as the top student in grade 11 is Brian Lim. And Brian, if you could just stay there. All good. Yep, you, you can keep the mask off. The June Bainan Scholarship Award is presented to the returning grade 9 to 11 student who has attained the top academic average regardless of grade. Everyone, please acknowledge the academic accomplishments of Brian Lim. I would like to extend a huge congratulations to all of our award winners from the school year that happened this morning. Congratulations, everyone. Before we move on to the last part of our ceremony, I would like to invite the Senior School Choir up one more time to the stage to perform Bye Bye Blackbird by Ray Henderson with Tallulah Tam on piano. Thank you to our choir. We are now shifting our ceremony into presentation of our prefects. I would like to welcome Corin Wallace and Ava Dryden, our head prefects for this school year, to the stage to welcome next year's prefects. Ava and Corin. Thank you, Mr. Palm. Corin and I both had a fantastic year, and we are so thankful for the opportunity to lead you. We are so excited to present next year's head prefects for 2021-2022, Calla Roberts and Brian Lim.
We know that Brian and Kala will lead you with enthusiasm and integrity. The entire Prefect team will work together, helping you all to have a memorable year. We will now pass the podium to Brian and Kala. Thank you. Thank you, Ava and Corin. Your leadership this year has been a wonderful example for us. We appreciate all the time and effort that the entire Prefect team put into this school year, and we're looking forward to leading you in the next school year. We now ask each Prefect for 2021-2022 to come down on stage and assemble for a group photo. Mira Sobkin, Round Square Prefect. Aya Ibrahim, Environment and Adventure Prefect. Howard Pollock, Arts Prefect. <laughs> Mia Becker, Service Prefect. <laughs> Jack Berry, GNS Ambassador. Matt Dang, Student Activities Council Prefect. <laughs> Devin Duquette and Harrison Stark, Games Captains. Hannah John, Grad Prefect. <laughs> Alice Lee, Cultural Prefect. Thank you, Brief We're excited about next year and the leadership that's gonna happen from all of our current grade 11 uh, students as you move into being our grade 12 group. I did wanna just quickly mention that uh, Corin and Ava, that you're here, um, we will talk more about our grade 12s at our grad event, um, but on behalf of all of us, uh, thank you for all of your amazing leadership throughout the year and the challenges you face through assemblies and everything else, but we, we wonderfully appreciate um, the example you've set throughout the year. Well done. With our summer break almost upon us, I wanted to take a few moments to reflect upon the school year we've had, congratulate, 
congratulate and celebrate you all, and finally, give you a few thoughts to take with you over the next few months. It has been quite the year. During July and August last year, as we were planning and wondering how the year might look here at GNS, I admit I was not quite sure what to expect. Would we be able to be in person for the entire year? Would we, would we be back online? How would classrooms look? Co-curriculars? Lunch? To be honest, while I was worried about some of these things, one area that I was pretty confident about was that the students would lead the way through it all. Here are three words that help me explain why I think this. Back in the fall of 2017, Gina's added a new attribute to our learner profile, persevering. Here's how it reads. We see possibilities where others see impossibilities and are not afraid of failure. We work hard with determination, improving and making progress despite obstacles or limitations with a focus on goal setting and personal growth. We are always looking for the next challenge to conquer with courage and strength. No one could know that everyone would be faced with this monumental challenge from the pandemic, but it certainly has allowed us to see the importance of this learner profile attribute. A term that is often used together with perseverance is resiliency. It is defined as the ability of a person to adjust or recover readily from adversity. Angela Duckworth, a professor at the University of Pennsylvania and the CEO of Character Lab, has researched on grit, which is sticking with things over the very long term until you master them. Now, interestingly enough, two of the five characteristics of someone possessing grit she identified include perseverance and resiliency, along with passion, conscientiousness, and another GNS value, courage. Persevering, resiliency, and grit. So why am I telling you all of this? At the beginning of this year, we were all faced with some significant challenges and that we hadn't faced before. There were some real concerns how the year might unfold and many procedures and protocols were put into place to help keep everyone as safe as possible. But not all of these necessarily supported you all being able to learn and thrive. And yet, here we are, literally at the very end of the school year, and you have all not only made it successfully to its completion, you have, to use a baseball metaphor, knocked it out of the park. And I would say the ball is still rising up and away. You have shown courage and perseverance and resiliency. You've all been pretty gritty. And I, for one, want to celebrate that monumental feat. And to be clear, I'm celebrating not just the students, but also the teachers and the staff and the families. Well done. But you know me, we need some reflection here. What can we learn from this? What can we take away to put in our IB toolkit for next year? Professor Duckworth states in looking at grit that talent counts once, but effort actually counts twice. She has a formula to this. You can see the formula says talent plus effort equals skill, and then skill plus effort equals achievement. So it's the effort that's important. That's the grit. And here's an interesting element to it. It can be developed. It's not something we're born with. Now the tricky part is, that you actually have to have a challenge to overcome in order to develop it. And actually going back to perseverance and resiliency, you actually have to fall or fail a little bit to be able to recover, to be able to continue to drive towards that eventual success. This pandemic has been so devastating in many ways and I think about everyone that has lost so much from this, including some loved ones. But as students, and our whole community, you have shown true grit in your ability to continue to work through this incredible challenge, and we are very proud of you. Now, using my love of geology and science, the image of an iceberg is a helpful way to understand the importance of grit. If the part of the iceberg above the waterline represents the achievement of the challenge and your goal reached, 
it can be deceiving that all was straightforward and without effort. Below the waterline, which actually is always the most and the largest part of the iceberg, represents all of that effort and practice and setbacks and falling before we can see the success. And it's important to note that success often comes only after a great deal of effort and often potential disappointments that we need to overcome. Even today, with our award achievers, there is a great deal under the waterline that represents how they were successful. I want to finish with a story. Many of my summers have been spent at summer camps, and both of my kids continue this family tradition. There are so many wonderful skills and reflections I've gained from these experiences and memories too. A few of these revolve around singing and playing guitar. Now often I would be the one playing gu the guitar and others would be singing. Two very close friends of mine had an amazing harmony together. And when they sang, it would stop a room. It was wonderful. And in reflecting on this speech, I remembered a particular song that they would sing called the Wood Song, which is by the Indigo Girls, a folk indie group from Georgia. The lyrics tie in perfectly today. The song speaks about being in a wood boat and trying to get to a destination. And the chorus reads, but the wood is tired and the wood is old and we'll make it fine if the weather holds. But if the weather holds, then we'll have missed the point that's where I need to go. We don't learn and grow if our weather is always fine. We need to have that challenge of a bit of stormy weather. But I think the message here is ultimately one of hope and the knowledge that you can overcome. The last verse helps to remind me when I don't always want to do this. And it reads, sometimes I ask to sneak a closer look, skip to the final chapter of the book, and then maybe steer us clear from some of the pain of what it took to get us where we are this far. No one gets to miss the storm of what will be just holding on for the ride. But the wood is tired and the wood is old and we'll make it fine if the weather holds. But if the weather holds, then we'll have missed the point. That's where I need to go. This year, your grit, your perseverance, your resiliency, and especially your courage and caring has helped each one of you and our whole community thrive. I do wish for you all, all this summer some calm weather of things that ease the restrictions of COVID, to be with friends and family when it is safe, and to enjoy one another's close company. We all feel privileged to have the opportunity to help you learn and grow this year. And once again, you have all in turn helped us to learn and grow with your example of grit. Well done, Griffins. As a note, this is a statue that's at the University of Guelph, where I attended it for my science degree, and, the, and they are also the Guelph Griffins, so I thought it would be a great way to finish. We all feel privileged. Um, we thank everybody tonight for helping and coming to our senior school ceremony, whether you were present here in Denver Hall, at school, watching in the gym, or somewhere else beyond our campus through the live stream. We are glad you could be part of this celebration. And now, without further ado, you are officially dismissed for the summer. Thank you.